Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today uh, we are finally getting around to reviewing Collection of Mana on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the ever wonderful Damien McFerrin and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> While Square's Seiken Densetsu series continues to this very day, it's the two SNES or Super Famicom if you prefer outings on which the franchise arguably built its enviable reputation. Seiken Densetsu 2, better known in the West as Secret of Mana, is one of the finest RPGs ever made, whilst its sequel has only been held back from global acclaim by the fact that it was sadly never localized outside Japan does make it a bit harder. That all changes with the release of Collection of Mana, the western localization of the Seiken Densetsu Collection, which launched on Switch in 2017 in Japan. Bloody hell, that long ago. This pack includes the first three titles in the franchise, the 1991 Game Boy original and the aforementioned 16-bit outings, as emulated by the experts at M2, which are the studio responsible for the Sega Ages 3D series on Switch, as well as Konami's recent Castlevania and Contra and anniversary collections. Suffice to say, they know their stuff. The involvement of M2 should be enough to put to rest any fears that this might be a hack job on Square Enix's part. The emulation is utterly, utterly flawless throughout. Each title includes a music test which allows you to appreciate the gorgeous soundtracks outside of the games themselves, as well as screen filters to ensure that you get the best view, either on the Switch's screen or indeed your television. Save states are also included for times when you can't reach an in-game save point, and multiplayer is possible on the SNES game thanks to those lovely detachable Joy-Con controllers. <laughs> the franchise debut known as Seiken Densetsu, I can't avoid mispronouncing that, Seiken Densetsu in Japan, Final Fantasy Adventure in North America, and Mystic Quest in Europe arrived early in the Game Boy's life and features enjoyable, if rather lightweight, action RPG mechanics, which actually predate the likes of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The visuals are quite basic, and the storyline is threadbare, even by early Game Boy standards, but the mixture of real-time action and role-playing stats still manages to click after all these years. It's a gentle introduction to the core mechanics of the Mana series, and despite its obvious simplicity compared to what would follow, it certainly has plenty of charm. Surprisingly, out of the three games presented here, the Game Boy entry is the one with the most screen options. You can choose to play in black and white with full screen and windowed variants, and there's also a Game Boy Color filter which adds a spot of vibrancy to the visuals. However, the best screen filter, at least in at least in Demo's opinion, is the one which replicates the lurid green display of the original Game Boy, complete with visible pixels. I personally grew up on a Game Boy Pocket, but this isn't my review. It's so convincing that we were immediately hit with a strong sense of nostalgia, with the only thing missing being that ghosting that happens whenever anything so much as sneezes on screen, but then again some things are better left in the past. Toggling through these screen modes is a simple case of tapping the ZR button, but you can't change the border artwork or or opt for a black surround, which some may find disappointing. Released in 1993, Secret of Mana is arguably the most famous entry in the franchise, at least outside of Japan. I mean, let's be honest. It's why you clicked on this review, isn't it? Even today, it remains a true 2D masterpiece with gorgeous visuals and one of the best 16-bit soundtracks ever committed to silicon, courtesy of Hiroki Kikuta. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Offering hours of gameplay and some of the most memorable moments in the history of the SNES, it's a game which surely needs no introduction, but we had one anyway. It's been re-released numerous times since 1993, including a smartphone port and a rather divisive remake on PS4, 
and is one of the games that you can play on your Super NES Classic Edition. While the storyline in Secret of Mana is still pretty basic and there are plenty of silly moments, such as your character's ability to travel over the map by being fired from a cannon, there's no denying the classic status of this game. Even the rather ropey combat, which is an odd mix of real-time and turn-based mechanics, can't dent its appeal. During battle, you're free to move around and swipe at your enemy Zelda-style, but you'll often find that your attacks don't register because your enemy is executing their recovery animation. At the times, your attack seems delayed because it's stacked on top of another attack from another one of your AI-controlled companions. Add to this the fact that your actions are bound by a recharging gauge, you can attack at any time but your blows will be weaker without a full charge, and it feels even further away from Zelda's more immediate gameplay. It's not really what you could call an elegant combat engine, but it's not enough to totally sink the game, and the innovative ring-based menu system still feels fresh at least. Speaking of AI companions, one of the big selling points of Secret of Mana is that you can enroll a pair of friends to aid you in your quest. Using a second controller, or if you had one, a SNES multi-tap, up to three people can control the main trio of heroes. This element is neatly replicated here thanks to the Switch's Joy-Con controllers. No matter where you are in the world, that second Joy-Con can be detached and handed to a friend for some welcome local co-op multiplayer. With a massive quest to undertake, packed with memorable locations, gorgeous music, and a really nice sense of progression via level-ups and enhanced items, Secret of Mana remains a solid gold classic. And finally, we have Seikin Densetsu 3, or as it is now officially titled in the West, Trials of Mana, the 1995 epic which would surely have followed the esteemed footsteps of its predecessor in terms of global acclaim if it had actually seen a release in the West. With improved visuals, multiple playable characters, and three different storylines to explore, it's a truly stunning piece of work, which makes us insanely pleased that it is finally available in the West in an official capacity. The localization is great as well, so much so that the English script for the other two games here look rather poor in comparison. The the impressive triangle story system means that this positively dwarfs Secret of Mana in terms of sheer scope, and elsewhere Square has improved the game in practically every single way you could imagine. Combat, while similar, has been enhanced dramatically and now flows a lot more smoothly than it did before. Instead of waiting for your weapon to recharge after an attack, your blows, which have a degree of auto-targeting, always have the same power. The key difference here is that subsequent attacks fill up a separate gauge which, when full, allows you to execute a more powerful special move. Furthermore, your AI allies are smarter and less inclined to get stuck behind scenery or wander off in the middle of a tense fight. Never a bad thing. Visually, this is perhaps one of the finest games to ever grace Nintendo's 16-bit system, with detailed characters and backgrounds which look like genuine works of art. Kikuta's soundtrack 2 is absolutely sumptuous. While it will naturally lack that all-important pang of nostalgia for those of us who only knew the previous game, there's no denying that this is top-tier musical artistry. It's incredible to think that this is on a non-CD console as well. That SNES sound chip really can pull its weight. Oddly, there are only two screen options available for Secret of Mana and Trials of Mana, full screen and windowed. That's it. With the former stretching out the image to give the best view. Personally, we prefer the windowed option, as it's how it was intended in, well, sort of. It's a shame that a CRT scanline option wasn't included here, especially as it exists in M2's Konami retro collections. Although, I mean, speaking for me personally, Alex, I couldn't give a toss about scan lines. <laughs> yes, I grew up with a CRT. Yes, things have improved. Let's stick with improved. When you consider how many titles Konami is packing into its anniversary collection packages, and that their retail price is almost half of what Square Enix is demanding for all three games included here, it's impossible not to question the value of Collection of Mana. However, there's no denying the fact that Secret of Mana is one of the finest console RPGs of all time, and even though it's readily available elsewhere, playing it on the Switch is like wrapping yourself up in a warm and familiar blanket. It's just right somehow. We we could argue that Secret of Mana is merely the appetizer for the real star of this collection, Trials of Mana. It's nothing short of a masterpiece, and finally getting the chance to play this officially in English is a landmark moment for SNES and RPG fans alike. Yes, there is the temptation to wait for the upcoming 3D remake, which has also been confirmed for Switch, but if you're serious about this genre, then it shouldn't take our recommendation to convince you to part with your hard-earned cash. What you've got here is two of the finest examples of the genre, accompanied by a a third likeable entry, which is also well worth a look. When you consider how many hours of top-notch entertainment are on offer, the price is very nearly a steal.
While Square's Seiken Densetsu... <laughs> While Square's Seiken Densetsu series continues to this... While Square's Seiken Densetsu... Densetsu! Densetsu! The Western localization of the Seiken Densetsu collection. I cannot escape that.